And welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a fantastic week so far. And for those of you who are celebrating uh, Christmas, Merry Christmas to you coming up. Uh, thank you, Lydia, for the wishes. Hi, Kamaljeet. Hi, Pachu. Uh, Shub Sharat. 26, Muskan Rana, Rashika, nice to see many of our students and our members in the class and on time. That's fantastic. Today we are looking at IELTS Task 2 Writing, and we are discussing how to progress your essay for a band 9. By progress, I mean how to continue to develop your essay for the body paragraphs and for the conclusion. We started this essay yesterday. We did the planning we wrote the thesis, we wrote the introduction with the hook in the background, and now it's time for us to continue with the essay and finish it. If you missed yesterday's class, no problem, because we will review the question and the introductory paragraph real quickly in a moment. 26 Muskan, you will have my email in just a moment. Hi, Yarabisha. Hi, Firdavs. Again, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com. That's academic EnglishHelp.com and GIELTSHelp.com. That's GeneralIELTSHelp.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of materials to help you improve your English, your vocabulary, your grammar, as well as your communication skills, like planning for the Task 2 essay effectively. This is our academic website here with the blue background. You can click that big red button to join our premium package. You can use the code R4TYJ to get 20% off of our premium course. You can use the same discount code on our general IELTS website with the green background, gieltshelp.com. Click that big red button there. Of course, we have apps. The apps link to our websites, Academic IELTS Help app links to ahelp.com, General IELTS Help app links to gieltshelp.com. And to answer your question about my email, my email is adrian at aehelp.com. So if you have questions, you can send your emails there. Uh, we are British Council Registration Centers for Saudi Arabia, and uh, we are British Council Certified Agents as well. So if you have questions about studying abroad, let us know. Again, um, the holiday schedule. So this is uh, our last class, everyone, before the uh, holiday uh, break. The holiday break is just four days, 24th to the 27th. So uh, from tomorrow until Sunday, I believe, there are no classes. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, no classes. And then there will be some more classes starting on the 28th. So 28th, 29th, 30th, more classes. And then again, a two day break for New Year's on the 31st and 1st, and then back on the 2nd. You can check that schedule on our YouTube community post. So that will be there. Hi, Eugene. I'm doing fantastic today, and I love the addition of the Santa Claus to that string of emojis. Very attentive. All right. Okay. So um, here we go with our task two. So this was the question that we started with yesterday. Let's just look at the question, go over the introduction, and then we'll get right into some body paragraph writing. Here we go. So IELTS task two writing, you should spend 40 minutes on this task. At the present time, the population of some countries includes a relatively large number of young adults compared with the number of older people. Do the advantages of this situation outweigh the disadvantages? That was the question. We identified that uh, the topic for this question is the age distribution of countries, of certain countries, okay? And then um, we identified that the question is asking if it's better or worse to have, <clears throat> to have lots of younger people. We thought in detail about this. 
And then we came up with the answer that it's better, okay? And we came up with a couple of good reasons for that, okay? So here is the thesis. The advantages of having a large proportion of young adults aged 20 to 45 in a country supersedes the negatives as this leads to productivity and development, okay? So the two key points of the essay are productivity and development, and that will be the um, body paragraphs, and that will be the focus. With this kind of question, students, where it's saying, uh, do the advantages of this situation outweigh the disadvantages? You do not need to discuss the disadvantages if you are writing about the advantages. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, Abhishek, no. <laughs> Abhishek's asking me right in this moment. I think I just answered your question, Abhishek. So Abhishek says, sir, can we write about the advantages and disadvantages? No, it doesn't ask you to write about both. It asks you, do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? So if you say the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, tell me why. If you say the disadvantages outweigh the advantages, tell me why. Okay. Unmall, to learn about how you can generate ideas on this topic, look at yesterday's class on the YouTube channel, and please don't spam with your questions, okay? All right, okay. So in this type of question, you should only choose one side, okay? Um, we already explained to the reader in the introduction that the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Now we need to explain why, and we want to focus our argument on that side. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So stay focused, everyone. Let's focus on this essay. If you have questions about other topics and IELTS, you can just send me an email. All right. Okay. So here is our introductory paragraph. Remember, students, it's really important to have structured study. Don't just jump all over the place asking questions about all different ideas. Focus on one idea, then move to another idea, right? Okay. Um, so let's take a look at this introductory paragraph. Here we go. So here's the hook. Uh, this is again, just review from yesterday. Okay. If you missed yesterday's class, you can always check that on the channel. So the age demographic of a country has a direct effect on its prosperity. Okay. And then here's the background. Most countries categorize their age populations as children, teenagers, young adults, mature adults, and elderly. Different age groups have different capacities to ensure the growth and prosperity of their nation. The advantages of having a large proportion of young adults in a country supersedes the negatives as this leads to productivity and development. So clearly my first point is productivity and my second point is development. Okay, so now this will become body paragraph one and this will become body paragraph two, okay? At this point, if you have uh, like 25 minutes remaining, you can still write a fantastic essay or even 20 minutes because you have really clear direction, okay? All right. It's right because it's the hook, the background, the thesis, okay? Tina, that's right. You only need to write about the side that you support. You don't have to go into both sides. Notice how in the beginning I introduce advantages, supersede the negatives, and I can include that in my conclusion one more time to make it clear, but I don't have to write about the negatives. It's not asking me to. It's asking me which one do I think. And in this case, it would actually be difficult to write about the negatives because there are so few negatives to having a lot of young people in or young adults in your society. So that would make it very challenging and unnecessary. Okay. Okay. So body paragraph one, everyone, here we go. We're working together on this. So body paragraph one is productivity, uh, clearly defined equals your topic sentence. Okay. 
So write your topic sentence. The body paragraph, for those of you who don't know, a typical body paragraph has a topic sentence plus explanation plus example plus connecting sentence. Okay, so connecting, concluding. That's a typical body paragraph, all right? Um, so here, your topic sentence is basically taking the word productivity and then being able to define that clearly uh, more for your reader. So give me a nice topic sentence here, okay? All right. So Ferdov says, young people have more energy and enthusiasm to build a precious society than the elderly. Um, okay, I think that's a bit of an explanation for Dobbs. Okay. Uh, it's not bad. I think you can do a little bit better. Okay. Uh, Un says, a large number of young adults has contributed substantially to the economy as they bring more products and services whereby they enhance the overall productivity of a society. Okay, Un, <laughs> great. In fact, it's a little bit too much. So be a little bit more concise. So a large percent of young adults in a country contribute su substantially uh, to the economy because they uh, create a lot of products and services. That would be a very good topic sentence. Okay, so a large percentage of young adults in a nation empower society to significantly increase manufacturing and industry, thereby creating a strong economy. Okay, very good. Yeah, so anyone who has something similar, you're on the right track. Okay, absolutely. Well done. Okay, so productivity here, well defined would be uh, products and uh, services, or in another sense, manufacturing. And look at countries like the United States or the UK or certain countries where there's a lack of young adults, or in Europe, they basically have to import young adults from other countries, nurses, doctors, right? So if you just visualize that, you can see a lot of this situation unfold and a lot of the logic unfold in front of you. Uh, Vikas says, young people tend to have more energy and faster thinking which helps them to boost the productivity uh, of any firm and what they are performing. Okay, again, Vikas, kind of like for Dobbs, you're more into the explanation with the energy, okay? Uh, Sunem says, having a great source of energy, young people make a great contribution to boost their uh, country's economy. So what a lot of you are doing is you're kind of skipping the topic sentence and you're going directly into the explanation. Okay, the explanation is the why with quantification, meaning numbers, okay? And you're kind of jumping ahead to that. Uh, so try not to jump to that. Um, so here is what I would write for my explanation. So the reason for this is that 20 to 30 year olds have lots of energy. They are able to work for uh, 12 hours a day. As well as many years of employment ahead. Okay, so uh, uh, 
Okay, yeah. Uh, so this would be my explanation, okay, the energy component, because you have to think about your reader as an alien, right? So the alien reader says, okay, well, what do you mean? Let me take it from the thesis here. So the alien reads the thesis and says, okay, so having a lot of young people leads to more productivity. The first question this reader will ask you is, what do you mean more productivity? And then you say, well, young adults uh, have the ability to increase manufacturing and services. Okay. Um, so let me just, my hands aren't listening to my brain. Okay. So you tell your reader that they increase manufacturing and services, all right? And then the reader says, well, why? Why, could, why do they increase manufacturing services, say, to, compared to a 10-year-old child or uh, compared to a 70-year-old man? And then you say, well, the reason for this is that 20 to 30-year-olds have lots of energy. They're able to work uh, 12 hours a day as well as uh, for many years of employment, right? So many years of employment ahead. So that's the explanation. Okay, does everybody see how the definition, this is the definition of more productivity, flows into an explanation of more productivity. You don't have to have the same words as me. There are many ways to say these ideas. It's just the concept of defining productivity and then explaining productivity of having a large population. Does everybody see that now? Is that clear? I want to make sure that I'm not losing you. Okay. All right, uh, Vinod, don't use proverbs, use clear arguments, okay? Uh, proverbs aren't going to get you a band nine uh, necessarily. Having great content, Vinod, will get you a band nine, okay? All right, Yarbisha says, young adults generally have a great ability to perform quality, durable, and reliable work due to their optimum period of energy and spirit. Yarbisha, that's some good writing. Okay, and I can see Amnal and Vikas and Abhishek saying, yep, no, we got it now, okay? All right, uh, Tina, it's not youngsters. Youngsters are children, usually, or teenagers. Young adults, okay? Unless you're like an 80-year-old person saying youngsters, uh, youngsters usually refer to children, okay? So young adults, or give me the age groups, adults, okay? So Tina says it is because adults engage themselves in various professions which in turn leads to large capital income students stay away from the word huge okay huge is not really an academic word it's very colloquial in most contexts okay uh, Ferdov says young adults are able to work from 10 to 12 hours per day as most of them are physically capable to do so and they have more passion for creating a better life for their children and themselves for Dobbs I would save the second half of that explanation for the next body paragraph, which will focus on development, okay? So let's not confuse uh, the two, okay? Let's keep them clearly separate, development and productivity, okay? All right. Okay, um, so give me an example. Keep this in mind. So give me an example of this productivity. Um, it's not first person, it's third person, okay? So don't use I or me or we or us, okay? It's a third person example. Try to be original, so don't write um, the a Harvard study shows, okay? Please don't write that, all right? Too many students do that kind of a template writing. Um, or research study shows. I want you to be original. So be original with your example and think about an example that you can use in both body paragraphs, okay? So use an example, okay? Ferdov says, for instance, many companies around the globe tend to hire the young generation as they believe that the more young staff, the more fruitful the company. Very good for Dobbs. Um, 
still kind of a, an explanation, but getting into an example, make it even more real world, even more tangible for dogs. Lubna says, uh, developed countries such as Canada and Australia have immigration programs which attracts young adults from around the globe to boost their productivity. Okay, let's stick to productivity. It's not about economy here. It's about productivity. Economy is um, a side effect, a positive side effect of uh, productivity. Okay. Nadia, uh, as the manager of Standard Chartered Bank in the U.S., works 14 to 16 hours, not for his sake, but also on behalf of those employees who suffer from COVID, he got an award from the bank as well. Okay, Nadia, I see what you're thinking, but it's a little, the, the connection is weak. Okay, so write it with a stronger connection. Yarbisha says, for instance, workers in a harbor can spend 12 hours to meet their target, achieving the bonus to take home. Okay, Yarbisha, I, the bonus, leave that out. Okay, we don't, the bonus is not necessary, but the start of it is good. Okay, you're, you're on the right track. So workers um, in a harbor, what do you mean by that? So some kind of industrial workers, okay. So Ferdov says, as a result, productivity can lead to innovations and future development. Um, yes, so you're making the connection to the next paragraph. That's how you're ending, okay? So An says, for example, a 25-year-old nurse can work twice as much um, in the hospital caring for patients as a 50-year-old. Yeah, very good. That is a good example, An, okay? So I'm going to take An's example. So for example, a 25-year-old nurse can work uh, double shifts in a hospital as where this becomes much more difficult for a 60-year-old nurse close to retirement. retirement. Okay. So yeah, that's a great example on, right? Compare, um, somebody who's young working in a hospital to somebody who is closer to retirement. And there we can see a very stark contrast. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. All right. Um, so now we have an example. Now we just need to connect, conclude to the next paragraph. Um, which will be about development, okay? Now, we can do this in a simple way, okay, in this case, because we're supporting the advantages uh, in both cases. So all I need to do is uh, just simply write, this is one of two clear benefits of having a large young uh, adult population, okay? So I don't need to overcomplicate this. I just need to say this is one of the two reasons. The next one is development, right? And I can just get right into that. So here's my body paragraph. Let's read it through. And then we're going to repeat the same concepts, the same steps, for the second body paragraph, okay? So here we go. So a large percentage of young adults in a nation empower society significantly to significantly increase manufacturing and services, thereby creating a strong economy. The reason for this is that 20 to 30 year olds have lots of energy. They are able to work for 12 hours a day as well as uh, have many years of employment ahead, okay? Whenever you see missing words, make sure to put them in there. 
Okay. Um, for example, a 25 year old nurse can work double shifts in a hospital as where this becomes much more difficult for a 60 year old nurse close to retirement. This is one uh, of two clear benefits of having a large young adult population. All right, let's get into the second one. So now it's body paragraph two. Everybody's got the right idea now. So topic sentence. The topic here is development. Now give me a definition for development. Okay, so how do you define development of a population, of a country, based on its age demographic? And again, think about yesterday's planning, and it will be easy writing. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. So OS says the prosperity and speed of development for countries need to have an army of young adults who are able to achieve this duty. Okay, OS, you haven't really defined it yet. You've just repeated the information. In, uh, when you're defining, avoid using the same word. So remember in the first body paragraph, we didn't say productivity. We said more manufacturing, more services. So right now we don't want to repeat the word development, but we want to define it. What is development? It's the growth of something. What is it the growth of? Okay. So um, Ferdov says young adults have more ambition to learn, create, invent modern skills, activities, and technologies, which are the main force of progress. Ferdov, that is a beautiful topic sentence. Okay. So I'm just going to use uh, uh, for dogs here as it's great. Okay, adjusted a little bit for Dobbs to make it more concise, but that was fantastic for Dobbs. Very, very good, okay? So you're on the right track. You don't need to say main because it is the force of progress. It's not just the main. It's the force of progress, no doubt about it. Um, you don't have to go into modern skills and activities, just socially and technologically, right? The younger generations drive progress, okay? Uh, so very good, okay? Very, very nice. Shaq Saab, you're very welcome. Okay. Um, Kalad, young people have new ideas and ambitions to improve their countries. Kalad, simple, beautiful. Okay, that works. And then comes the explanation afterwards, right? Okay, you're on the right track. Very good. All right. Okay, Pachu, again, think about how to avoid the word develop or development. You want to define it, not repeat it. Okay. It's a very important tip, everyone, that when you have your main points in your thesis, in your introduction, like productivity and development, you don't want to repeat these words in your topic sentences because then you're just repeating. You're not going into more detail, okay? So go into more detail. Lubna says countries with a more uh, number of middle-aged citizens contribute immensely to innovating technology and uh, society, okay? Technology and society. Uh, you don't need to say development because innovating is a paraphrase, okay? So it's a more of a definition, Lubna, okay? Uh, Nick Hill says, furthermore, youthful population have fresh ideas and innovative skills. Fresh ideas, Nick Hill, and innovative skills are kind of the same. So you're just repeating only one of those, okay? For the growth of a better society. So Nick Hill, Concise. Furthermore, a youthful population has innovative skills and impacts the growth for a better society. Okay. 
Paula says young adults are the key piece to develop economic systems more robustly adaptable to modern life. Okay, again, Paula, avoid uh, the word develop. Okay, develop, development should not be in your topic sentence. It's already in your thesis. All right. Okay. Um, invent and create are not necessarily the same ideas. So they can be, but they're not necessarily the same ideas. I think uh, Shaley's asking that. They are kind of similar, uh, Shaley. And if I were writing this for a university class, I would probably rethink that. But I think for the IELTS, it's fine. Good point, though, Shaley. Okay. All right. Okay, so some nice points. Let's take a look at an explanation. So explanation. This is where your reader asks you uh, why. Okay, how does this happen? So uh, why, why is it that young people have more ambition to learn, to create, to invent? Uh, so what's going on? Why, why does that happen? Can you explain that? Okay. Give me an explanation. Um, Ferdov says, as the memory capacity is limited and deteriorates with age, young people have more space in their memory. They receive with less effort. Mm, I think you're a little bit off mark there, Ferdov's. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Ferdov's, uh, young adults are uh, enrolled in universities and schools. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. So... Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So these are the ideas. It's not just the memory, but it's your historical context, right? So young adults adapt the latest information from universities and learn from the achievements and failures of previous generations to build a better future. Okay. Right. So you look at what your dad did, what your grandpa did, and you say, hey, OK, I think I can do that better now. And of course, you're learning from university. So take your own social context. OK. All right. So Abhishek says the young generation is uh, working around the clock to learn new technologies and innovations because they are dynamic and eager to learn the tech which helps them in their work. OK, good. All right. So. Um, Yarabisha says, youthful people are in this stage of spirituous life where they're looking for high achievements. Thus, ambition empowers young adults to give their best. That leads to marvelous results of work that results on better products. Yeah, they're looking to, it's called self-actualization. Okay, so young adults are driven by self Okay, self-actualization, that's the idea that you're looking for. To self-actualize means that you have a dream of becoming a certain type of person, famous for your acting, famous for your teaching, famous for your electrical engineering designs. So it's your ambition of who you want to be, right? And as a young adult, people have all kinds of uh, ambition for their self-actualization, so that when they become old, they can look back and say, hey, I did that. That was me. That was mine. Okay. All right. Nick Hill says, uh, youth, youthful adults who are recruited to a company have great and new information incorporated from learning in universities. Okay. Um, so, okay. Uh, we have some good ideas here. Now, let's go back to our example 
from the previous paragraph, I don't and I want you to use the same example here to create strong cohesion. Okay, hi, Atika. So Lydia says, for example, thousands of young adults who work in healthcare sectors, such as nurse, nurses and doctors, learn further skill sets to identify the mo to work with the most recent machines and up-to-date facilities. Okay, you're on the right track, Lydia. So uh, remember our example from the previous paragraph. For example, a 25-year-old nurse can work double shifts in a hospital as where this becomes much more difficult for a 60-year-old nurse close to retirement. This is one of two clear benefits of having a large young population. So yeah, here, ask yourself, what can a 25-year-old nurse do better than a 60-year-old nurse in the hospital today? Of course, a 60-year-old nurse will bring with him or her experience, but the 25-year-old nurse will bring something else, okay? So what does the 25-year-old nurse bring to the hospital, all right? Okay, so that's the idea, all right? Using the same example for both body paragraphs allows you to create stronger cohesion, okay? So here, uh, my example is back to that 25-year-old nurse, right? So for instance, the nurse freshly graduated from university is up to date with the latest information on treatments and medication, as there were, this is uh, unlikely the case for nurses who are nearing their golden years. Furthermore, if I have some time and I can add a little bit more, I might write something like, uh, furthermore, the young nurse is likely motivated to improve these modern treatments and invent or discover even better ones for the sake of their patients. Okay? which is often very true, right? So it's 25, 26, 27 year old nurses and doctors that do a master's degree, a PhD, and then they do a dissertation. Now we don't wanna go into that much detail. That would be too much for the IELTS exam, but we get the idea, right? So the young nurse uh, is likely motivated to improve these modern treatments and make them even better, invent or discover even better ones for the sake of their patients, okay? Uh, golden years is not an idiom. It's an expression, Makbuba. Okay, we, that's not considered an idiom. It's just a collocation. It's an expression. And yes, that would be okay to use. Okay, and it's very polite as well in this case. Okay, all right. So here we don't need a connecting or concluding sentence because we have the conclusion coming up. And the conclusion has three parts. So it's points restated or paraphrased, okay? Plus your argument strengthened, plus a take home message.
Okay, so those are the three parts of your conclusion, all right? Um, and uh, for the IELTS, it's kind of like a high school essay where you can start with in conclusion. For those of you going into universities in Australia, Canada, US, UK, uh, learn to not start your conclusion with in conclusion. University professors, college professors don't like that. Uh, but um, for uh, IELTS, it's kind of like the high school style where you say in conclusion. Okay. All right. So let's conclude this essay. So we want to restate our points. Our points are productivity and development, right? So in conclusion, Okay, so I'm using similar words, um, just different word forms or a slight paraphrase. So in conclusion, countries that have a large number of young adults tend to have greater growth and productivity. Then the argument strengthened, okay? So therefore, now it's third person. I never want to switch to I, me, my because it's third person throughout, okay? So Ferdov says, in conclusion, it is clear that the benefits of having more young adults in a country outweigh the drawbacks of this trend. Yeah, that's great, okay? So therefore, Okay. So therefore, the benefits of having such an age demographic uh, is greatly advantageous. Okay. So it means that it's a big advantage. And here I'm strengthening my argument. Okay. Okay. And we talked about this, right? Like Canada, the US, Australia. And of course, this kind of goes back to a reason a lot of people are doing the IELTS exam is because they want to go study and work in other countries like Australia, like Canada. And of course, those countries are like, welcome, welcome. Come on, come on. Yeah, um, of course, because it's huge value. So for a country to lose its young generation is devastating. That's why countries, uh, some countries around the world are not really happy to let educated young adults leave their country. Okay. So that's the take home message. This is likely the reason that nations with strong economies strong, uh, constantly strive to have a high proportion of young adults in their societies. Okay. All right, um, so let's take a look at this question. Let's read the essay one more time, see if it makes sense. We stayed on track. We completed the task. We have good grammar, good uh, vocabulary. Let's look at the question. So at the present time, the population of some countries includes a relatively large number of young adults compared with the number of older people. Uh, do the advantages of this situation outweigh the disadvantages. Here is our response. The age demographic of a country has a direct effect on its prosperity. Most countries categorize their age populations as children, teenagers, young adults, 18 to 40, mature adults, and elderly, 60 and over. Different age groups have different capacities to ensure the growth and prosperity of their nation. The advantages of having a large proportion of young adults in a country supersedes the negatives as this leads to productivity and development. 
A large percentage of young adults in a nation empower society to significantly increase manufacturing and services, thereby creating a strong economy. The reason for this is that 20 to 30 year olds have lots of energy. They are able to work 12 hours a day as well as have many years of employment ahead. For example, a 25 year old nurse can work double shifts in a hospital as where this becomes much more difficult for a 60 year old nurse close to retirement. This is one of two clear benefits of having a large young adult population. Young adults have great ambition to learn, create, and invent social, socially and technologically. And these are the forces of progress for a nation. Young adults are driven by self-actualization and adapt the latest information from universities and learn from the achievements and failures of the previous generation to build a better future. For instance, the nurse freshly graduated from university is up to date with the latest information on treatments and medication as where this is unlikely the case for nurses who are nearing their golden years. Furthermore, the young nurse is likely motivated to improve these modern treatments and invent or discover even better ones for the sake of their patients. In conclusion, countries that have a large number of young adults tend to have greater growth and productivity. Therefore, the benefits of having such an age demographic is greatly advantageous. This is likely the reason that nations with strong economies constantly strive to have a higher proportion of young adults in their society. Okay. Let's simplify this and make it a little bit clearer. All right. So, <coughs> excuse me. That is your essay. That answers the question clearly. And it took us two classes to do this, but of course, that's with a lot of speaking and feedback. So just imagine, for those of you that were in yesterday's class and today's class, if I'm not doing all this talking, if I'm not reading all of your sentences, I probably read about four or five other essays total. Um, you can do this all in 40 minutes, okay? So you can plan it and write it all in 40 minutes. And, uh, and it doesn't have to be super fast, okay? Remember, a little bit of planning goes a long way, okay? That is your goal. I will post this essay on our YouTube community board at a later time. Students, uh, again, make sure to check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gltshelp.com for general IELTS. We are world leaders in IELTS exam preparation. People that uh, use our products always improve their band scores. And uh, you can use this code R4TYJ to get a discount on our premium package. And you can use our editing writing services to improve your writing. You're very welcome, Lubna. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, and if you're celebrating, and Merry Christmas to all of those who are celebrating. Uh, I hope you have safe and happy holidays. Uh, and for those of you who are not celebrating Christmas, I still wish you the best uh, over the next few days going into the weekend. And um, again, I will be back on the 28th, so hopefully I will see you then. Much love to all all of you, you're all beautiful, brilliant people. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest for now. Bye.